Father, we return God again. We are in the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit here in the Tanah Gospel Church uh, International Headquarters here. Um, we've been discussing the book of Romans in our Sunday school teaching, an impromptu teaching of the Holy Bible in this Sunday school uh, setup. So today we're looking at uh, Romans chapter 4. Uh, we're reading from verse 13 through verse or 25, rather, the last verse. And they want to see the promise uh, granted through faith. The promise granted uh, through faith. Faith in who? Faith in God. Okay? So I read the scripture. For the promise that he will be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. As I tell us that faith is righteous. Faith has righteousness. And what are the righteousnesses of faith? They are love, joy, peace, Goodness, kindness, long suffering, faithfulness or loyalty, okay, meekness and temperance or maturity. Okay, this can be called the righteousnesses of uh, faith. When you have faith in God, you have all this. Presidable, okay. For you, those two are of the law ideas, okay? Faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, okay? When God declares that we are heirs of God, we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus, okay? Being joint heirs with God and with Christ Jesus is not by law, it is by faith. Sometimes of things so far, evidence of things he has seen. The faith in God, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven in heart. So for me and you to remain just here with Christ and just here of God, then we need that particular ingredient, divine ingredient. Okay, and that is faith. Without faith, we can never be just here of God. We can never be just here with Christ Jesus. So if you want to say, okay, uh, you desire all the time being joint here with Christ Jesus, then you must rest on who? On God absolutely. You must believe in God absolutely, not in any other lesser thing than God. Not what you created by yourself that will make you to become joint here with Christ or with God. For example, fasting from future fasting, you created it by yourself. It's your own strength. Okay? You exercise to want God for something. But God is saying, that is not what I need from you. What I need from you is what I've given you. And what has He given us? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So for me and you to be joined here with God, then we must have that, what is called faith, the foundation of it all. For without faith, it is impossible to please God according to Hebrews 11 verse 6. And so, if you don't please God, how can you be joined here with Him? How can you be heirs of God or be joined here with Christ Jesus? So you need faith. Faith is fundamental, precious. Okay, fundamental in our works with uh, who? With God. Alright, we're ready for that. For in those who are from the law are heirs, faith is made void, and uh, the promise made of no effect. Because what? Because the law brings about wrath. Law is set aside for what? To punish offenders. Okay? So law brings about wrath. Okay? But something brings about peace. And now we want to say the righteousness of God. Okay? Okay. So, for when there is no law, there is no transgression. That is, where there is no law, there is no sin. So, when we are talking about sin, sin, Satan is punished because law establishes it. If law doesn't establish it, there is nothing like sin. You cannot have anything like sin or Satan is bad nation. Receive the law. And the Satan cannot operate apart from the law. What Satan uses against mankind is no other thing than the law. 
That's why Satan, the man of Satan is an accuser. Praise to the Lord. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. For as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things we do not exist as though they exist, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that uh, he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendant be. And uh, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was uh, strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and uh, being fully convinced that uh, what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Praise to the Lord. We can see the strongness of faith of Abraham. He did not waver. Concerning what God has promised him that he will do in his life. If anything will get anything from you, from God, it is no other thing than faith. Faith in him. Okay, the only way you can make God happy with you is when you trust him for everything. Not doubting him for anything. And that's why Jesus Christ said, Blessed are those who do not find fault with me. Okay, that's better than those who do not say, disbelieve me, but believe in whatever I say. So when you doubt God, you are, you are fighting for with God. You are finding fault with Him. You are saying it's unable. You are saying it's incapable. You are saying it's not worthy. That's what you are saying when you doubt God. You are saying it doesn't exist. That's what you do when you doubt God. But when you doubt the Word of God, which is God Himself. And that's why it's dangerous for me and you to doubt the ability or the assistance of God from time to time. Once God exists, then he's able to do whatever we want from him. He's able to give us whatever we're asking. But before that can happen, we must believe that he exists, that he's not doubting him at all. Take note of this, when you doubt God, it means you are saying God is not in existence. And if the God you believe created you is not in existence, are you in existence too? That is the danger in doubting God. When you doubt God, it means you are saying God does not exist. Yet you believe that God created you and everything. So if you, if you, if you think God does not exist, it means you too, you don't exist. Because by Him you exist. Without Him, you cannot exist. And that's a very vital point where by which me and you should ask for never doubt God, but believe in Him absolutely. Mark you, the word of God is God uh, himself. You can see Abraham here, his faith was strong. The Lord strengthened his faith. Then me and you must ask God to strengthen our faith in him. And how can our faith be strengthened? Our faith will be strengthened by how we got faith. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing, by what? By the word of God. Okay? You can only have faith when you read or talk about or hear about the testimonies of God. Testimonies strengthens your faith in Him. And His words are His testimonies. And those are the words that should strengthen you in Him. When you look at the past things He has done, the miraculous things He has done, as written down for us in the Holy Bible, 
then you should believe that he exists. Perhaps one you are and received, you know, by maybe ministration, okay, and gave you the conviction that truly there are, there are miracles and there is miracle, then that should make you to believe in God the more. Also, when you ask God, if you have ever asked anything from God and He has granted you, that should also give you the conviction that God exists. And that is the more reason you must not doubt Him. Okay? Praise you the Lord. Now, what are we saying? Abraham did something here. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Our faith must give glory to God all the time. How can our faith give glory to God all the time when our faith is loving, when our faith is peaceful? When our faith is joyful, when our faith is good, when our faith is kind, when our faith is long suffering, when our faith is honest, faithful, when our faith is uh, meek, when our faith is uh, no mature, okay? It is then our faith is giving glory to God, okay? So we must make sure that our faith gives glory to God from time to time. And, and then Convinced that what he had promised, he was able to do what? To perform it. Abraham had the conviction. Conviction is very, very necessary. Not confusion. Christians must have conviction that God exists. Christians must have conviction that what God has said, he is able to do it. If he is not able to do it, he wouldn't have said it. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He knew when he pronounces it, light must come. And he pronounced it, and light came. You read that kind in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. So whatever God has written down for us, is what has pronounced. And when we believe it, it must work for us. Okay, that shouldn't be too far-fetched. Look at the, you know, the fruitful trees, the herbs, okay? What God said he would do, I did not doing it. What God has created them to do in human's life, I did not doing it. So that is the case. That should give you more assurance that whatever God has pronounced by his word that created everything, it must come to be. If God has promised you anything, then you have to believe. At a better time, what God has promised you will manifest. You must be fully convinced, not half convinced, fully convinced that whatever God has promised, He is able to perform it. Okay? And that is also telling me and you that uh, when we promise a thing to anybody, we must do what? We must fulfill it. Promise is a debt that we must pay. Me and you have promised Jesus, saying, Jesus, this is my life. I'm giving my life to you. I will never turn back from you. We must not withdraw, it. we must not withdraw our promise from Jesus Christ. When we don't withdraw our promise from Jesus Christ, God will not withdraw his promises from us. Therefore, let me and you from time to time stay put with Christ Jesus. Obey him and do what he says. Follow him loyally and uh, honestly. Take note of this very well, that God is able to do what he has promised to do. Okay, and therefore, it was accounted for him for righteousness. When you trust God absolutely, then you become a righteous person in God. Nothing gives you righteousness apart from trusting in him. I'm letting, let me ship in this to you. When you're looking for power, truth is the power. Righteousness is an authority. When you're talking about power and authority, we are talking of truth and what? And righteousness. Righteousness will be true, and truth must what? Must be righteous. Okay? They are interwoven. They are together. You cannot separate them. You cannot separate power from authority. Power and authority must work together from time to time. So it was accounted to Abraham for what? For righteousness because he had what? He had faith in God. So to so have righteousness, no, it's not, it's not something that uh, you have to be praying for. God, give me righteousness. God, let me be righteous. God, let me. No, 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 it doesn't call for that. What you just simply need to do is 
to believe in him. It doesn't call for fasting. You want to be righteous and begin to punish yourself, fasting, not eating, not drinking. That will not give you righteousness. That will only give you man's righteousness, not God's righteousness. Okay? So if you want God's righteousness, all you need to do is to believe in him. Did, did you read that Abraham fasted? Have you ever read it, that Abraham fasted? It's not fasting that made Abraham to be righteous with God. No. Don't think I'm attacking fasting. I'm only showing you what you need to do to be righteous with God. It's simple. Just believe in Him. Trust Him. And like I said earlier on, believing in God, trusting in God, not doubting God, is saying that you believe God exists. The moment you doubt God, you are saying it doesn't exist. And you too, you know that exist. Because even your creator demands exist, that means you created one. You are not exist, you don't exist also. So to be righteous, the conditionality for being righteous or to become righteous is to have faith in God. And that's why Jesus commanded us in Mark 11, 22, to have faith in God. Why? That we may have the righteousness of God, that we may be righteous with God in the sight of God. Praise you the Lord. Matthew, love is righteous. Joy is righteous, peace is righteous, goodness is righteous, kindness is righteous, love suffering is righteous, faithfulness or loyalty or honesty is righteous, meekness is righteous, and temperance of self-control or maturity is righteous. So when you're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, what will give you the fruit of the Holy Spirit is no other than what? Faith. Without faith, you don't have it. Appreciate the Lord. Take note of this. I'm just making an impromptu teaching. Okay? Alright. So, we read for that. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Okay? Who was delivered up for our offenses and was raised because of our justification. The purpose of Jesus coming to this planet heart, or the purpose of, for which the Father sent him here on this planet heart, is to achieve two things. Two things that bring about one thing. Okay, to die for our offenses and to be raised up for our justification. Justification, and we have what that we have salvation. If Jesus was not delivered because of our offenses, if he did not die on the cross at Calvary, if he was not raised from the dead, then we do not have salvation. If anything has given us salvation in it, it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For if Jesus did not rise, we would have gotten any salvation. But somebody that will rise must have died. And that's why Jesus had to die and to be raised up by the Father to pay for our verses and to justify us. And that's how Apostle Paul said, Who shall lay any charge against the light? It is God who justifies us. We are justified by the death and the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ, which totally is called salvation for me and you. Therefore, what we are saying is, let me and you make sure that uh, on no occasion without God, we must not waver at all at his promises. Whatever he has promised is able to make him come to pass. Me and you must have this conviction from time to time that he is able, abundantly able to deliver and to say, our God is able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust him. As long as you believe that the air you breathe in, which you cannot see to naked eyes exist, then you must believe God who has created everything, even the air. As long as you believe that when you are thirsty, you drink water, the thirstiness will go, then me and you must from time to time believe God, that that God created the water exists. 
As soon as you believe that when you sow seed on the ground, it will sprout and yield fruit, then we must believe that the God who created the land is there and that is able to do whatever we desire of him. Therefore, have faith in God. As the Lord Jesus Christ said, and let me and you be strengthened in faith in God Almighty. And from time to time, please God, in the name of Jesus. Mark you, without faith, you can never have the Holy Spirit, gift of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. You can never manifest the gift of the Holy Spirit unless you have faith. Faith in who? Faith in God. God bless you. As you refuse from time to time to disbelieve God, but be convinced from time to time that God exists. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen.